I started this gangsta shit. And Mr. Motherfucker thanks I get hello. I started this gangsta shit. And Mr. Motherfucker thanks I get hello. Hey, if you're new here and enjoying the content, please take a minute to hit that subscribe button. Join us. All right, everyone. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I am Ethan Van Skyver, 26-year veteran of this comic book industry. World's most charming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Star Wars fan. Also, um, media figure with integrity. Uh, that is me. And in this world that suffers so uh, for lack of heroes, uh, I snap on my cape has a snap on the front of it and I walk towards the fire that's what I do so uh, I just wrapped up a whole series of videos called SJW Star Wars fandom scandal at one point I put sex abuse scandal in the title but it got all my videos demonetized and I must have lost like probably like $85 in revenue because I put I insisted on putting the words sex abuse scandal but you know what i was right to remove those words because it's not just sex abuse these people abuse themselves and each other emotionally mentally and probably if you gave them a chance physically okay so the story went like this essentially um a fellow named bobby roberts was being accused of sexual assault by the other weirdo SJWs in his community. Nobody could produce a victim. Nobody could produce an actual story. Nobody really had anything. Uh, just this tenuous story that this fellow Bobby Roberts, who ran uh, a podcast called Full of Sith with his partner, not in that way, that I know of, uh, Brian Young, okay, uh, had sexually assaulted all of these women. Multiple women, apparently, and a few people, a few women within uh, this SJW Viper's Nest actually knew uh, of who the females were. But that was none of anyone's business. What was important was that Bobby Roberts was shunned and put away and all of this stuff. And uh, now Brian Young, uh, Bobby Roberts' partner, not in that way, stood up for him and said, I don't, I don't know if I believe any of this. I don't think Bobby Roberts did anything wrong. And for that, uh, he was attacked. As a women non-believer, you have to believe women. You, you have to believe everything women say at all times. Um, now, Brian Young, quickly upon receiving the backlash of women non-believership, uh, bowed, crumbled, uh, threw his friend, Bobby Roberts, under the bus like a coward and said, I am so sorry, I got forgot. I forgot that being an SJW means always believing women, always. Now, uh, I watched all of this and was horrified. I laughed uh, because they're SJWs, okay? And SJWs eating each other up is funny. It's always funny. And all of these people are, in my opinion, the worst of the worst. I mean, terrible, terrible people. I don't know why they suffer each other's, uh, you know, company at all. I have no idea. When they could just be here with us, the Fandom Menace, having a good time. Instead, uh, they uh, suffer through each other's, I don't know, uh, piercing scrutiny over obedience to weirdo social justice rules and dogma and doctrine uh and uh yeah it is it's got to be painful it's got to be annoying uh when they could just again be free with the fandom menace uh so in any case in all of this i laughed and i said i'm gonna make a documentary because i really want to point out you know the the sexual assault stuff with bobby roberts i don't know anything about it that's not really the point the point is how they treat each other, how SJWs treat each other, um, and how they isolate and swarm, and how inhumane they are to one another. Uh, so I started to make a documentary about it, and while I was in the beginning stages of making uh, this set of documentaries, and it was a set of short documentaries, uh, a fellow named Jason Ward, you can see his name pictured here, uh, popped up in my timeline, uh, and he asked me, he said, Ethan, uh, are you making this documentary? Because I have the truth about the Bobby Roberts thing. And Jason Ward, uh, and I said, oh, well, listen, I'm all ears. Jason Ward, not a friend of mine at all. In fact, uh, I think he would call himself a foe. Uh, I would just call him a schmo. I, I don't, I have no, you know, I don't have enemies uh, personally in the SJW Star Wars community. I just have multiple people that I laugh at. I, I you know, uh, they've never done anything particularly to me except for call me the devil and all the weirdo names. That they, they really have a big kind of blown out uh, image of who I am and what I represent. All I represent is pointing the finger of laughter and scorn at their <laughs> stupidity. That's all I represent. I, I have nothing. I have nothing. It's not. It's nothing personal. It's just you're all weird uh, and cruel and mean to each other. Uh, so Jason spins a whole story 
uh, and it's a very deeply personal and affecting story, um, which makes some sense to me, but there's still kind of a little bit of a disconnect there. Jason tells me uh, that basically the story um, was a miscommunication involving uh, Bobby Roberts being friends with somebody uh, who, as it turns out, very, very awful, sad story about um, the woman who Jason eventually married, became his wife, uh, being sexually assaulted at a comic convention, and somehow some sort of weirdo transference happened where the uh, perpetrator of that sexual assault, because he knew somebody who knew Bobby Roberts, I mean, that's seriously how it happened, um, Bobby Roberts became in in you know in the rumor mill the person who actually committed this sexual assault and because nobody was naming names of the victims and indeed they weren't they weren't naming victims or circumstances or anything like that uh, it was easy for people to run uh, with this idea that this character Bobby Roberts who is about four foot two I mean he's a, he's a little guy he's a little little guy uh, I'd call him little bro even if he was ten years older than me in the family I'd say what's up little bro because he's four foot two. Uh, I would, uh, you know, yeah, uh, he was taking the blame for all of this. He disappeared from Twitter. He didn't, he's like, I didn't do this. And then he just disappeared. He fled. Uh, now, Jason Ward coming to me and giving me this information was interesting. And I said, you know, while I've got you, Jason Ward, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to interview you uh, about a bunch of other things. Okay, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about these allegations. We'll talk about this community. That's important. But Jason Ward had uh, many uh, kind of larger issues surrounding him that I, I think I would be uh, remiss if I didn't take the time to ask him a few questions and, and see what he answered. Now that video became Star Wars, SJW Star Wars Fandom Scandal Part 4. It was just a, a one hour long telephone conversation that basically I think proved that he was a deceptive uh, fellow um, who may or may not have some uh, pretty big ties to Lucasfilm. All right, Now, all right, had to clear my throat there. Now, uh, we uh, come back to today. After we've released this video, the Star Wars SJW community was a buzz. They were furious at Jason Ward for sitting down with me, uh, a media figure, beloved media figure, with integrity, and telling me his story. Jason, Part of what Jason did was he pointed out a few members of the SJW community who were, some of, who, some of whom were uh, female, still are female, uh, and to kind of say, make some suggestions about them. I don't think anything was out of the, out of line, um, but just to say, this is where I think all of this stuff happened, and we used to be friends, and we're not friends anymore, and that's that. A bunch of kind of high school gossip, really. I mean, the key thing for me was just to get to the bottom of why these allegations were happening, uh, you know, who they were, you know, what 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 their purpose was, and probably what the truth uh, might be. So. In any case, uh, Jason Ward already isolated from his community because he stood up against these women. He didn't just not believe them. Uh, he demanded evidence from them, and that, that was enough for him. All right, so uh, in any case, I was impressed by all this. I was impressed by Jason Ward. I must admit, uh, even though I am um, a very sharp tack, uh, I was I was kind of like, yeah, the, you know, Jason Ward, I guess, has thrown all of this away. Uh, he's no longer expecting to uh, to eat at the table to sit at the table with these maniacs um, because you know look his wife's you know his wife's integrity uh, and honor was involved etc cetera, etc cetera. so here's what happens this morning okay I wake up and I knew they were mad at him I wake up to this message from Tracy thinks she's funny aka feminist nerd who is one of the queen bees okay one of the queen bees of the SJW Star Wars community uh, she initially she's very funny I, all of these people are funny uh, when I first started making Star Wars videos, um, she attacked me out of the blue on Twitter and was just like, you're not a part of this community. And that I've laughed about that ever since. I, I thought that was really, really funny. Uh, so in any case, I said, I, yeah, I don't, I don't care. Um, in any case, uh, she hits me up with this message. She says, did you threaten Jason with a story about his wife's rape? He's claiming you blackmailed him into that interview. Now, uh, Jason, from the messages that I saw from Jason on Twitter, Jason was actually being very forthright. Uh, on Twitter, Jason was saying, look, you know, why did I speak to Ethan? Because I needed to get this story out. Uh, I told him what happened to my wife, and he did actually um, promise not to tell anyone that uh, as long as, uh, you know, I, I was truthful with him about whatever it was that he said. 
Uh, he made it sound pretty much like a, a version of the events that I kind of agreed with. Little did I know, uh, Jason was also going to people like Tracy thinks she's funny and all of her weirdo friends that caused this trouble for him and his friends in the first place and said, you don't understand. Ethan had information about my wife and he was threatening to blast it to the high heavens. He was going to tell everyone if I didn't cooperate with him. Don't you understand? I did it for my wife. Uh, this is ridiculous. That's not, again, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm stunned at the perfidy of these people. I, I, you know, just this actually takes my breath away. This legitimately takes my breath away that Jason is, J Jason is everything I thought he was. Now I've reached out to him and I've said, look, Jason, this is, I got to make another video now because of this. You actually fooled me into thinking you had some decency uh, please respond. He has not responded yet. Uh, so I, I'm going to go ahead and just run. I'm going to tell you what happens, what's happening here with this uh, silliness. Uh, I said, what are, you, what are you nuts? He's not claiming that at all. Look at me, naive me. I'm still believing that Jason wouldn't do this. That Jason wouldn't double time, like two time, you know, both sides of the aisle so that he could swim straight up the middle of the channel. Uh, no, <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, so I, I actually, I gave her evidence. I said, look, no, here's how... Before we go any further with this, Tracy, let me just show you. This is the original contact that I had with Jason Ward. And you could see him here. This was back in uh, November, uh, you know, right after uh, right after Thanksgiving. He says, because he hears that I'm going to do the documentary, he says, how goes it? Are you making a video about that Bobby Roberts stuff? Because uh, there's some really effed up twists. There's a effed up twist in the whole thing if you want the truth. Uh, this isn't nerd shit or difference of opinion. This is real life shit, man. I'm like, hey, I'm all ears. Can you please keep this between us for right now? I'll tell you what's up. I'm like, yeah, okay. So this is from here. Jason goes on to tell me the story about his wife being assaulted uh, before she was his wife and how it got blamed on Bobby and how this and that. And I don't know why these people are doing this. And I went, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. So I had this information at the start of my, um, at the start of my video series. And I thought, well, this might be it. It might not. But it doesn't really explain why feminist nerd Tracy thinks she's funny and all of her weirdo friends are still talking about how there are multiple victims. And when they uh, were asked about Jason's wife, they denied it. They said, no, it's not her. So there, I mean, there are two possibilities, obviously. Either, um, uh, you know, listen, there, there really are other victims and Bobby really did do this, which would be fascinating. Or... Um, they really liked the story and didn't want the, you know, the fact that the facts uh, of the matter to get in the way. And they could keep these victims vague uh, and still keep their narrative about Bobby victimizing women, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is, uh, I, I sent her this and I just said, look, uh, here's Jason Ward reaching out to me to tell me the story of his wife, which I had no clue about. None. I don't know anything. In order to enlighten me about what you monsters <laughs> were doing to Bobby Roberts. He told me on condition that I kept it my, to myself, which I did. Your group of weirdos, uh, I'll tell you, you people are really something. They are. They're really something. My dad would have said that. He would say, you're really something. I'm talking like my dad in Jersey. She says, uh, including me saying that, oh, wait, included, including me saying that you blackmailed him. And the only reason he did the interview was because you threatened to release a story about his wife's rape. He is absolutely claiming that. And that's amazing. So I said, well, you know, it, by the way, I should have asked her. Like, I was, when she started, like, texting me, I was like, this is so weird. I don't understand this. I should have actually asked for uh, some evidence of that. I should have asked for a screenshot of Jason claiming that. Uh, but I didn't. And, of course, it's, it's too late now. Uh, I said, so here's the thing about that. I have receipts. So either you're lying, likely, or you're purposely misconstruing what he's saying. Obviously, uh, also likely. Uh, publicly, he's telling the truth, I said. So either way, Tracy, uh, I'm right. The truth is on my side. And if you'd like to cause some trouble, I'm ready to make SJW Star Wars Fandom Scandal Part 6, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, not because she's causing trouble necessarily, but because the story has gotten funnier. Uh, she says, I'm telling you that Jason is telling everyone you forced him into that interview. His new narrative is that he had no choice. The DM you just sent to me says otherwise. So she's basically conceding. Yeah, it, you know, Jason's lying because you just proved it to me. Uh, I said, so, okay. So I expect to see you telling people the truth about that. People send me stuff. And she says, we don't have to be friends. And I don't care what you say or do on your channel. 
Well, you, yes, you do. Uh, but the narrative Jason is spinning is that he had no choice but to do that interview because you were going to release Amanda's rape. Now, that is cosmically evil. If that is true, um, that says an awful lot about Jason Ward. I mean, that is an amazing thing that he would, after the kindness I extended to him, and by the way, uh, you know, if Tracy actually had done the same thing, if she'd reached out and said, I would have shown her the same kindness that I showed Jason Ward. Um, you know, uh, I would have definitely made a video to uh, expose her as what she is. But, um, you know, I honestly, I kept my entire end of the deal with Jason Ward. You know, everything that he, he asked for, I lived up to and more. I behaved with honor. As a media figure with integrity, I did exactly what uh, I said I was going to do. And I, I thought I presented the truth. Uh, I said, look, I'll run your allegations past Jason. And, and that can be between you guys. I don't really care. I just make videos, which is absolutely the truth. Uh, you know, it, it can't get personal. She says, you're in this. Just be straight with me. It's a yes or no. What? Huh? I say, what? What are you saying? This is amazing how these people's brains work. I said, go on. If you want to, if you want to be contentious, then own it. If you had shit on Jason and he was forced to do that interview, then say so. If not, that's important. Wow. Are you? She's like, are you lying to me about this? Did you really like? Are you really a monster who uh, holds deeply personal? I mean, deeply per personal information. Awful. You know, life destroying information over people. Uh, in order to force them to do what you want them to do, which basically ends up being a YouTube video for which you will be you will make thirty dollars. Uh, that's not who I am at all. I said uh, I just showed you the receipts of exactly what happened. I had nothing on Jason. I don't operate like that. I made a series of videos about you destroying Bobby and Brian, Bobby Roberts, Brian Young, because it was good subject matter for people to understand how SJWs manipulate people. Jason cared enough about Bobby to reach out to me and offer me some sad truth. I don't know anything about uh, any of you goofballs beyond what you spill about yourselves on Twitter. Uh, and then she blocks me, okay? Which is fine. Uh, she should block me at that point. <laughs> now, and now here comes the swarm for Jason. Tracy gets the information from me. What, did she sit on this for two seconds and immediately goes on Twitter to point her finger uh, at the person who she thinks has wronged her, her cult, her little society that she's built up here, that she's Queen Bee over. Uh, so, so here's my final word. Jason pretended he was forced into that interview. Jason reached out to EVS and offered the interview. He willingly set us up, and then he ran and played victim with an elaborate lie. Receipts, and I guess this is the conversation that we had. Uh, all true, all true. I, I love, I, I absolutely love watching this happen. I can't imagine why anyone, and this is what I told Jason, Initially, when he first reached out to me, I laughed at him. I said, I don't know why anybody would want to be an SJW. I don't know why anybody would want to live under these conditions and circumstances with people like this. I don't understand it. I really don't. It's got to be bad for your health. Uh, do you guys want some receipts? Jason, you're a pathologically lying piece of garbage, and I have some fucking tea. I don't know what that means. Jason was not blackmailed uh, by what he's saying. He's gaslighting the entire community. EVS did not threaten shit. Jason willingly did that interview. Oh my god, this is going to be so good, guys. This is this is going to be a really, really good uh, SJW swarm. Get ready to enjoy. Uh, here we go. Uh, okay, Jason. Hold on. Okay, Jason has been claiming he did that interview out of some altruistic obligation. He even involved a story about his wife to gaslight all of us. Jason approached Ethan. And again, she shows that the same uh, conversation that I gave her. She's using that. She loves that. I'm so glad I gave it to her. Also, Jason willingly played into a narrative that harmed Saf. Saf is the young lady who actually came out and made the initial, well, not the initial accusation. She kind of re-stirred the pot about the allegations against Bobby Roberts, okay? Uh, and by the way, Saf is very protected within this community from what I can see. And Jason did mention her. He said, oh, we used to be friends. We're not friends anymore. Uh, that's that's what he said. So Jason willingly played into a narrative that harmed Saf and I, and then spun his own version where he was a victim with no choice. Uh, this is fantastic. I you know, honestly, Jason hasn't gotten back to me yet, but I can't wait to see what he does have to say. I can't believe he would try to do this. That he thought this would work to to spin both sides of the aisle here and and 
Woof, it's awesome. It's tremendous, Jason. Well done. This is what happened. Also, Ethan threatened to make another video about me. Bring it on, bitch. You got it, bitch. Uh, say whatever you want. <laughs> I will li happily live the rest of my life knowing I'm not as low or devoid of character as you. Well, that's called having brain damage. And uh, yes, you will live the rest of your life that way. It's inoperable. Uh, also, Jason willingly played into a narrative that harms... Oh, I think I already said that, showed this one. All right, so now everyone else reacts. Uh, this is the uh, narrative... I, the word narrative is very, very important to SJWs. Narrative. It's a story. It's a lie. Mostly it's a lie, usually, that they're going with. So this is the narrative that has been created. This is the story, the lie, the agenda. And from here, everyone has to sort of uh, build on that narrative, but but definitely sell that narrative. Uh, J Red, look at this guy. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so funny. Uh, Jason at making Star Wars. This is a complete piece of shit. Uh, he brought the information to EVS. He intentionally threw Saf and Tracy understand the bus under under the bus for no reason other than to hurt them. He was told the Bobby stuff wasn't about his wife, but he made it about her to hurt others. All right, see, this is hysterical. At this point, this is just hysteria. Uh, I, you know, listen. Yeah, Jason is Jason is a complete piece of shit, probably. Uh, he didn't bring the information to me to intentionally uh, hurt Saf. I don't think he threw Saf or Tracy under the bus. I think he thought uh, he might be... I, I still think Jason thinks that this his story is true. I still think Jason believes um, that uh, the Bobby Roberts allegations all stemmed from this misunderstanding. I think that that is his truth. And if you, if you put him in a lie detector, I'm sure that he would say the same thing and he would pass. I mean, to absolutely pass. Uh, that that's where these Bobby Roberts allegations came from. Uh, but delivering that information to me came with some social risks for him, uh, and he's trying to get away from having to uh, suffer the consequences of those social risks. Had nothing to do with Safford Tracy. As far as I can see, he still holds both in some affection. Uh, he was told the Bobby stuff wasn't about his wife. Well, he didn't believe that. Uh, he didn't make it about her to hurt others at all. I think he did it to save Bobby Roberts. But this is the hysteria of this soy boy right here. Uh, and, you know, what he's going to do is he's going to take the narrative and make it weirder. Uh, much weirder. All right, so here comes another dude here. It's interesting to see in this day and age, but it seems pretty clear. People are out there, and their sole purpose is to be shitty in the name of righteousness. We, as a human race... By the way, um, I want to point out that the word shitty... Uh, is an SJW term. Uh, S SJWs use the word shitty a lot. It's an ugly, like, gross word, um, but they use it a lot. And if you see people using the word shitty, you're a shitty person. Uh, that that is, They're almost definitely an SJW. I'm going to make... I might actually make a series of videos, um, uh, each of them based around something that SJWs always say. It's part of the MPC programming. Uh, shitty is definitely in there, all right? Um, normal people don't say this. Normal people don't don't ta use this word all the time, but they use it constantly. Uh, we, as the human race, need to tell those people their attitudes aren't welcome. Am I intolerant? Yup, of hateful bullshit. His, his entire tweets are hateful. Uh, so guys like Jason who put up this facade of tolerance, I have no time for shit like that. Uh, just as a caring human being, why would anyone... And this comes from someone who has only chatted with him on SM sparingly. I don't know what SM is. It sounds uh, kinky. Uh, look, um, yeah, everything that he's basically saying is about uh, hate again. I mean, this is, uh, you know, he, he claims to be a caring human being, but he's not trying to emph emph uh, empathize, empathize uh, with Jason or sort out the truth like I just did. I mean, you know, even as Jason has probably wronged me pretty harshly, uh, I'm still trying to understand him as a human being. SJWs don't do that. SJWs don't try to examine true motives. They try to sell more lies. They try to just kind of make it worse in order to uh, build the anger. You need to build the anger at this guy. And so this is, you know, uh, completely dishonest, and we move on. And it builds from here. Here's Tracy. See my latest tweets. Jason is actually garbage garbage oh i saw them it's just beyond bad uh, okay yeah it is it is beyond bad but you need to understand probably you need to spend a little time uh, invest a little energy understanding why he did what he did okay uh, that's all and he is he's a weasel and a snake 
And I think all of those things are true. Uh, but to make it, you know, like extra, like he did it deliberately with the intent to harm women uh, is not the case. And that's absurd. Uh, if you habitually point swarms of fuckwits at people, especially my partner, to harass them, you can fuck off and die. Please and thanks. I, 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 I honestly don't, don't know what they're talking about. Jason mentioned Sap. I, I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. But whatever. Cartoon avatar weirdo. Uh, women of the wills. Uh, what's funny is how he brags about how stupid the left is. Their knee-jerk outrage. And he's right about us because we're just drawing attention to him over and over again. This is Jason saying something. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, he's ta he must be talking about me. Uh, he's talking about how uh, I, I don't brag about how stupid the left is. I, I sadly comment on it. Uh, and I am right about you, because you, again, yeah, you are. You're drawing attention to me over and over and over again. Uh, I have become their god, uh, essentially. They they cannot stop talking about me, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, says the one who went on his show. That's proof that he's referring to me. I'm done with men in this fandom, guys. I'm done. Uh, that's probably a good idea. Uh, so you'll talk to misogynistic, racist, ho let's, all right, adjectives, adjectives, uh, all of the adjectives, assholes. When there are so many other people you could talk to instead. Uh, there are no people in this community that Jason could actually talk to. I mean, uh, you know, again, these are not, I'm showing you over and over again. These are not people that empathize, uh, that seek to understand or are interested in helping anyone but themselves. Um, Kim, I blocked him after how he treated you and Lizzie. I'm tempted to unblock him so I can at him. Oh, no. Don't at him. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. For goodness sakes. Uh, all right, so uh, now this person here, Bethany Lucina, uh, this is a con artist and a half. I, she wrote an article about how uh, the reason why Chuck Wendig got fired, and she used pseudoscience. The reason Chuck Wendig got fired was because I made fun of him, and that sent algorithms his way, which eventually led to him getting fired. And she's she is crazy. But what's great about it is that here she is. She's actually involved in all this. And I actually thought that she was over here somewhere. I thought she was over there somewhere. No, she's right here hanging out with weirdos uh, about, you know, uh, Jason Ward and this whole controversy with Bobby Roberts. All of these people are involved. This is like eyes wide shut, except, um, uh, you know, sad and poor and, and weird. Uh, all right. Reminder, don't tag EVS and Geeks and Gamers Comicsgate into other people's mentions or bring their names up in CG forums or videos. EVS's entire shtick is telling his monkeys where their swarm should head next. Bethany, respectfully, and I use that term ironically, um, that is exactly what's going on right here. Uh, Tracy and your entire shtick is to tell your swarm of people. Uh, first of all, to get them riled up and get them violently angry, uh, to accuse, um, to actually build up um, an infraction. And don't get me wrong, what Jason did is, again, snake-like, weaselly. Uh, it is pretty pretty gross. Um, but your thing is to rile them up and then point them at Jason. Now, Jason, people are going to be murderously angry at Jason and his wife uh, because of what's going on here. All I'm doing is laughing at you guys. I got to be clear about that. Uh, I don't want anyone to swarm you. I don't want anyone to harass you. We just want to... There's no reason to. Our, our whole purpose uh, is to point and laugh at, at how awful you are. And I think we're doing that effectively. Uh, all right. So what else? Uh, if you missed the real... If you missed the MakingStarWars.net meltdown on Twitter yesterday after their alt-right interview, you need to read this thread. All right. So that's the thread that Tracy pulled up. Uh... I support Staff and Tracy, not the douchebags targeting them. Uh, toxicity and harassment are never okay. So basically, um, again, now it's become that Jason didn't try to rescue um, his friend, Bobby Roberts, with what he believed was his truth. Here's, let's let's re-examine this here. This is, this is how this narrative, quote-unquote, got spun. Jason came to me in order to uh, basically reveal something very sad that his wife went through in order to rescue his friend, Bobby Roberts' reputation, whose life was being destroyed at the hands of people like Sal and Tracy, okay? That's why he came to me. And then what he did was kind of cowardly. He kind of went back to them after the interview came out and to avoid suffering the consequences, and you're seeing the consequences here, the social consequences, 
uh, of these people. He said, um, hey, uh, I, was be- I did it at gunpoint. He was forcing me to do it. Uh, now, once that got revealed to be a lie, uh, now suddenly he did this to hurt Sal and Tracy. That's, that's the narrative that's been spun here. Uh, that's, you know, uh, they've, they've kind of realigned their target to attack Jason because Jason's entire purpose, apparently, this was all about Tracy thinks she's funny. Everything was all about feminist nerd. Everything was all about, uh, not Sal, Saf. Uh, sorry, I couldn't see that. Everything was all about Tracy and Saf. It was all about their feelings. It wasn't about anything else. It wasn't about you know Bobby Roberts and his life being destroyed. Uh, it wasn't about Jason trying to uh, you know bring rationality and truth and facts uh, to these crazy allegations. Apparently, it was all about Saf and Tracy, who are the two ladies who um, are launching uh, these life-destroying, devastating accusations at Bobby Roberts and refusing to offer proof. Called out on that fact. Uh, This is now, uh, this person here is now calling Jason a douchebag that's targeting them. The irony is just, it's, it's, God, these people are awful. I want you to wake up every morning and just be so glad that you are not a part of their community, that you're not relying on them for friendship or loyalty or any of the things uh, that normal people look to other human beings for. You do not have to, you don't have to hope that Saf and Tracy will support you in any way. And that is proof of God. All right. All right. So more people saying awful things. Look at this. Awful things about Jason. Uh, and, uh, Here's Voxerless Vosk. This is funny. Jason Ward is like a, Ru- a Russian nesting doll of fuckery. Every time you think we've reached the end, another layer is removed and there's something even nastier inside. Don't use a story about rape to cover up a bad thing you did. Holy F. What did he do that was bad? I don't understand that. I don't think he understands either. Uh, so that's Voxerless Vosk. And again, funny how between EVS and Jason Ward, goddamn EVS of all people is more honest. No, uh, compared to all of you, uh, every single last one of you, I'm more honest, more likable, more kind. Uh, I have more integrity. I um, am more interested in people's feelings. I'm more humane, uh, and all of those things. I mean, by a lo- by miles and miles, uh, I'm better than you. I can't even. T- Let me try again. Let me try to express this uh, in actual uh, words. I mean, I uh, I am so much better <laughs> than every single one of you SJWs combined. Uh, in terms of how I care about people, how honest I am, how much integrity I have, uh, and uh, you know my, the kindness and goodness of my motivations. And I know that you guys don't see that because you're nuts, but uh, that's fine. Uh, all right, so there's that again. And uh, any more? Uh, yeah, more. Oh, this guy, this thick-lipped, purple-looking weirdo, Brian Larson again. This guy who was uh, calling me out uh, for attacking the. Uh, I don't know why they all look like this. This guy could be Brian Young's brother. <laughs> I don't know why they all look. Look at him. He's just moist and thick. He's got, you know, chunky purple lips and bad facial hair. Uh, and he's here to call people shitty. Uh, all right. Jason Ward's whole goal was to sick EVS and his legion of shit goblins on women who dared to stand up to him. The number of folks who were buying his bullshit is sickening but not surprising. Again, but not surprising is another SJWism. They always say things like this and they go, it's not surprising. No, they're always, they're world weary. They've seen it all. They know what to expect, apparently. Uh, and, and you do, you know what to expect when you're spinning, you know, a false narrative. Um, no, Jason Ward's whole goal, and by the way, putting these little things in here is to make it not searchable. So Jason Ward would never be able, if he searched his name, he'd never find that this coward uh, was making fun of him and, and lying about him. And that's, that's the reason to do that. This guy is a coward. Um, Jason Ward's whole goal uh, was to uh, at, to put light uh, to these crazy, dark, sinister, and um, uh, you know murky accusations against his friend. Again, that was his whole goal, and this is what he gets. And again, here's this guy. He's advocating for a blockchain. If you want to talk shit about all of these people online and don't want to get called out for it, try using a Twitter blockchain. Uh, That way, you can do that. Also, use asterisks in their name. That way, nobody can find you. That's a good idea. Uh, This will block everyone. That'll save it. Yeah, you can can talk shit endlessly. Uh, You can harass people without them knowing. That's the right thing to do, probably. Um... 
Yeah, and let, just one last little note here. Please, let's remember. Let's have a memorial. All the other times the women and minorities sounded the alarm but were brushed off and told to ignore trolls. It's happening again, right now. This is dangerous, and we all need to do what we can to deplatform them. All right, this guy. Again, take a long second to get used to, uh, you know, this is, this is the reality. This is what men uh, have become in the United States of America. All right, so uh, what can I say about this? Um, this is a long video, but it's watching these people swarm is uh, very entertaining to me. Um, I'm sad that Jason Ward is exactly what I thought he was, if what Tracy is telling me is true. Uh, and I, I, I'm afraid it, it might be. You know, I'm, I'm disappointed in Jason that, you know, I thought he was going to actually stand up to them. But at the end of the day, you know, people do kind of try to go running home. And as the SJW fandom cult uh, is his home, I guess. Uh, and he had no value for me or anything anything that we talked about, uh, you know, any of that. But then again, uh, you know, my video was aimed at exposing him for being a dishonest character. So why should I be surprised that beyond, uh, you know, the video that we did, beyond the interview that we did together in real life, uh, he exposes himself as a dishonest character in every aspect of his life. And, and this is kind of what he's going to deserve now at this point. Uh, he is going to suffer t twofold. He's going to suffer twofold. And, and that's kind of what happens uh, when you um, ride the fence, uh, when you try to play both sides. Oh, guys. <laughs> it's rough out there, but it's really funny. These SJWs in pop culture are hilarious cowards. They're awful liars. They're vicious bullies. And I will never, ever, ever stop pointing it out. Ever. It's what I promise to do for you as a media figure with kindness, honesty, and integrity. Uh, all of those things. I promise you that I'll always do that. Hey, I got a P.O. Box. Want to send me some mail? Send it to Ethan Van Skyver. P.O. Box 607, Marlton, New Jersey, 08053. And I'll probably open it up on the live stream. Thanks very much, everyone. Hey, you want to follow me on Twitter? Are you sure? Well, if so, I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. That's at Ethan Van Skyver. See you there. Join the Fandom Menace and execute your own Order 66 with our incredible line of t-shirts, Soy Low, A Soy Wars Story, Tico, A Soy Wars Story, and our brand new smoking hot Soy Wars Plan Nine. Make a statement today. This is the only trilogy you'll ever need. The link is below in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to become part of this community, subscribe to this channel by clicking the Laughing Man Face logo right on your screen. Ring the bell for notifications as well. You'll never miss a live chat. And stay tuned, another video by Comic Artist Pro Secrets is coming right up.